The first reading today, Moses tells the people of Israel something that might sound a little odd on the surface. He says that God gave you bread from heaven to teach you that one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So God gave them bread to teach them that they aren't to live on bread alone. How do they understand that? Well, we're told that this is a food that was unknown to them, unknown to their fathers before them. In fact, it was given only for those 40 years when the people were in the desert. And the whole point of the people wandering in the desert was that they would learn to be dependent on God that they would come close to God, that they would come to know the Lord. That was their problem. They didn't believe initially, and then when they said they did, then they didn't trust him, and so they wound up wandering in the desert for 40 years. The prophets actually would refer to that as the honeymoon period for Israel, when they were to draw near to God. And so God fed them with manna, which the psalmist says is the food of angels. Well, angels obviously don't have a body. They don't eat food. So if this is the food of angels, we have to ask ourselves, what is it that the angels feed on? Well, that's the point that Moses is making, that we would learn that we are to to live according to to the word of God, from every word that comes from the mouth of God. Now we could look at that and hold up the sacred scriptures and say, look, the the Bible is the word of God. Indeed it is. But St. John of the Cross tells us in a very simple way, the most profound message that we need to understand. He says, in the silence of eternity, God spoke one word. Jesus, which is why St. John would tell us at the beginning of his gospel, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, the Word was God. Ultimately, he goes on to say the Word became flesh. So what does Jesus tell us today? Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. The Word became flesh. God spoke one word in the silence of eternity. And throughout the history of humanity, we have been trying to unpack that one word. And there are thousands and thousands of volumes of books that have been written as we try to understand the depth of that one word. But you will never come to understand that word simply by reading books. You will never understand that word simply by trying to grasp it with your mind. The word can only be understood in the silence of your heart. Just as God spoke in the silence of eternity, so now he speaks in the silence of our hearts. And he speaks that same word. But Jesus tells us what that word is. So if we are to live by the word that comes from the mouth of God, and the word became flesh, then we are to live by Jesus, but not at an arm's distance. St. Paul says, Is the bread we break not a participation in the body of Christ? And is the cup that we share not a participation in the blood of Christ? So he is not at a distance. He's not out there somewhere. He's in here. That's where we're going to find him. That's where he speaks in the silence. That's where he wants us to come to know him. And most importantly, where he wants us to come to love him. 
He is there because he loves you. It's the only reason that he is there. As he made very clear that anyone who eats his flesh and drinks his blood has eternal life. That's what he wants for you. So if we are to live by the word that comes from the mouth of God, Jesus makes it clear again in the gospel. He said, I have life because of my Father. And anyone who eats this bread will have life because of me. In other words, he wants to give to you and me his life, divine life. And he doesn't just want you to have it a little bit. Remember he said, I came that they might have life and then they might have it abundantly. That's what he wants for you and me. Abundance of divine life. Now we can only share in the life of God to the degree that we have our hearts open to receive it. Some of us might need a crowbar to be able to pry it open a little bit and get something in there. But what we want is to continually strive to open more and more and more. And that's why he continues to give himself to us. We have to understand in the Holy Eucharist, this is the entire person of Jesus. We will say of the bread and as we come along and distribute Holy Communion, we say the body of Christ. But it's not just the body of Christ. Because when you receive Holy Communion, you receive Jesus just as he is right now, which means seated in glory next to his Father. There is no separation of the body and the blood of Christ anymore. That happened on the cross, but in the resurrection and the glorification, that can't happen anymore. So when you receive Holy Communion, you receive the entire person of Jesus, the body, the blood, the soul, and the divinity of our blessed Lord. If you receive just the chalice, you receive the body, the blood, the soul, and the divinity of Jesus. If you receive under both species, you don't receive any more. And if you receive under only one species, you don't receive anything less. It is the entire person of Jesus, 100%. You didn't get a part of Jesus or a piece of Jesus. You receive his entire person. And if that is the body, blood, soul, and divinity, that is the life that he's talking about, the divine life that he wants to give to us. Now we have to ask ourselves what seems like a pretty obvious question. Do I believe this? The people he spoke to didn't. Remember in what I call the diabolical verse, it's John 6, 6, 6. It says they walked with him no longer. They said, this is hard to listen to. Who can endure it? And for 2,000 years, people have said the same thing. He couldn't have meant that. Well, just ask yourself what he did with his apostles every single time that they misunderstood, because it happened a lot. He would tell them a parable and the, the apostles didn't get it. And he'd take them aside and he would explain it to them because they didn't understand. What happened when he talked about the Eucharist? They said, this is hard to listen to, who can endure it? They walked with him no longer. And Jesus looked at his 12 and said, do you want to leave me too? Oh, they understood exactly what he meant. And he didn't say, no, 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 guys, I didn't mean it that way, don't, no, you misunderstood again. No, he didn't do that. They understood perfectly well what he meant and he made it absolutely clear. 
unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. The bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. Could he make it any more clear? They got it. And he wasn't backing away. He allowed all those people to walk away because they didn't believe. And the tragedy now, 2,000 years later, more than 75% of people who call themselves Catholic do not believe in the Eucharist. More than 75% of the people who come to Mass on Sunday do not believe in the Eucharist. So that's why I'm asking the question, do you believe this? This is not a sign of Jesus. This isn't a symbol of Jesus. What happens is because we can't see with our eyes, we don't believe. Now, if you want, you can look it up. There are times when the Eucharist has become a piece of human flesh. It's no longer a sacrament at that point. It's now the physical presence of Jesus. It's not the sacramental presence of Jesus. But we don't believe because a host started to bleed. There are hundreds of those that have happened around the world. We don't believe because the host turned into a piece of meat, and when they have done the scientific studies on those, it's a piece of cardiac tissue from a male that came from Israel, and he was in his 30s. And you know, all the things are there. If you want to look it all up, it's there. We don't believe because of that. We believe because Jesus is God and he said, this is my body. Scripture says he spoke and it came to be. We know that Jesus healed lots of people. But remember when the man had the withered hand, it was a Sabbath. So they were going to be real concerned to see if Jesus was going to heal somebody on the Sabbath so they could accuse him. He didn't even touch the man. He just simply said, reach your hand out, and it was healed. And then we hear about the centurion. He comes to Jesus and asks him to heal his servant. Jesus said, I'll come with you. He said, no, no, no. He said, I'm a man under authority myself. If I say to one, go, he goes. If I say to another, come, he comes. He said, only say the word and my servant will be healed. And what did Jesus say? I have never seen this much faith in Israel. The very people that God chose as his own didn't have faith that God would speak and it would be. The pagan Roman centurion believed and it happened exactly as Jesus spoke. Jesus said, this is my body. He is God. He spoke and it came to be. And now he works through his priests. Just as he was able to speak in a way that his apostles could hear it 2,000 years ago, his divinity worked through his humanity and it came out of his human mouth with his human vocal cords. Now his divinity works through the humanity of his priests. So that when the priest speaks, he doesn't say, this is the body of Jesus. He says, this is my body, because it's Jesus who is speaking through the priest. He spoke and it came to be. We are to live by the one word that came from the mouth of God. He spoke and it came to be. Everything that is created, Scripture tells us, was created through the Son of God. He has now given us the greatest gift. 
himself. Do we believe? That's the real question every one of us needs to look at in our heart. Not just, yeah, I suppose, maybe, kind of, well, if I have to. No, no, no. Do you believe? Think of what happens if we don't. You come here and you kneel down and and the priest says the body of Christ, you say amen, which means so it is. And if you don't believe that, you're guilty of idol worship. We worship Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. We've got adoration 24 hours a day. If that's just a piece of bread, we're worshiping a piece of bread. That's a violation of the first commandment. If it's just a piece of bread, why are we here? You can go home and eat all the bread you want. You don't need to come here and eat bread. You come here because there's something entirely different. Think about it. You come forward and you kneel down and you put your tongue out. It's the only thing in your entire life that you do that for. Because there is something entirely different. That's why up until just a couple of decades ago, it was absolutely forbidden for anybody to receive in the hand. There are lots of things that we do sticking our hand out. Church said, no, this isn't an ordinary piece of bread. This isn't a bread line. This is God. We want to receive him with the greatest reverence, with the greatest respect, with the greatest love. We want to receive him in the way that he's giving himself to us, which is pure love. That's the only proper way. So again, for us to really look deep into ourselves, because there are people who are saying, this is hard to listen to, who can endure it? I don't mean the homily, you might be saying that too, but I mean the words of Jesus. I mean the reality of the Holy Eucharist. And so Jesus is going to look at each and every one of us today. He's going to say, do you want to leave me too? That's how important this is. Which, by the way, if you want to read in John chapter 6 a little further, why did Judas betray Jesus? The Eucharist. It's right there. He mentions it twice at the end of the sixth chapter of John's Gospel. Did I not choose 12 of you, but one of you is a devil? Right in the context of the Holy Eucharist. Judas wouldn't accept the Eucharist. When did he leave? When did he betray the Lord? Exactly at the time, at the Last Supper of the consecration. He received what Jesus gave him and he walked out. He couldn't and he wouldn't believe. And so he betrayed him. Some things for us to ponder. We can't just keep this at an arm's distance. We can't just kind of, sort of, maybe believe just in case. No, no. It's either Jesus or it isn't. It's not kind of Jesus. It's not a little bit of Jesus. It's not even a lot of Jesus. It is 100%. There is no in-between. So he doesn't have an in-between about how much he loves you. We don't want to have an in-between about how much we love him either. But we can't love someone who isn't real. So if we don't know him in our hearts, if we're not hearing God speak in the silence of our heart that one word that he spoke in the silence of eternity, then we're not going to be willing to receive him. So open our hearts. Let us pray and ask God to open our hearts, 
Open the ears of our hearts, open the eyes of our hearts so that we can see, so that we can hear, so that we can believe. And that we can say, yes, Lord, I believe. You are the Son of God. You are the one who has come into this world. That is who you receive in Holy Communion. So some things to ponder as we go through the Mass and as you go through your week and your life. Ask yourself honestly and seriously, do I really believe? Will I live according to the one word that came forth from the mouth of God? The one word spoken in the silence of eternity who became flesh and gives himself to us in the Holy Eucharist.